Shalom, sistren, and welcome to another Lioness Liberty lesson. Today, we are continuing on with um, deepening our understanding of the spirit of wisdom, which proceeds from the Most High Yah. And within this lesson today, we will be delving into how to obtain wisdom, how to acquire wisdom, how to become wise in the Most High and in His truth. So before we begin, we give all praise and glory and honor to the Most High in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and pray that His Holy Spirit, His Ruach HaKodesh, may guide us in all understanding and truth of His mysteries. And that through this lesson, we might be edified in His Spirit to go forth and to serve Him more fully according to His will. Amen and hallelujah. Let us begin. So we will be starting by looking at Colossians chapter 2 and we'll be reading verses 1 through 10. So we're starting in the book of Colossians chapter 2 and we're reading verses 1 through 10. This particular reading is um, going to be read from the George Lamsa Peshitta. So it is the Aramaic translation of the New Testament into English. I would that you knew how I struggled for your sakes, and for the sakes of those who are at Laodicea, and for the rest who have not seen me personally, that their hearts may be comforted, and that they may be brought near by love to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding of the knowledge of the mystery of Yah the Father and of Christ. Or Hamashiach, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And I say this so that no man may beguile you with enticing words. For though I am far away from you in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit. And I rejoice to see your orderliness and the sincerity of your faith in Hamashiach. Just as you have, therefore, accepted Yeshua HaMashiach, our Yahuwah, so you must be led by him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man mislead you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the teaching of men, after the principles of the world, and not after Hamashiach. For in him is embodied all the fullness of the Godhead, and it is through him that you also have been made complete, for he is the head of all angelic orders and powers. So this this um, excerpt here from Colossians chapter 2 is... Um, a letter that Paul was writing to the church at Laodicea. And what we're noting here from reading this scripture is in pointing to Yeshua HaMashiach, we see that is it is in him that is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So all the riches of wisdom and knowledge are embodied in HaMashiach. And this is because, where are we here? This is because in verse 9 we see that in Hamashiach is the embodiment of the fullness of the Godhead. So we know that in him is this fullness of the spirit of wisdom. And a, a continual theme that we are seeing as we delve into understanding wisdom is that many of these studies actually all these studies tend to point right back to Hamashiach and this is a good indication that we are going in the right direction our compass is pointing towards Hamashiach and that is how we know we're staying on this straight and narrow um, because we do need to be aware especially in these last days 
um, not to be misled and not to be um, deceived through the traditions of men and philosophy and the deceit for there is an oversaturation of information and knowledge right now so we are even more called to ask Yah for his spirit of discernment and to you know study for ourselves to show ourselves approved and never just accept what anyone says including myself i pray that you are researching this and studying this on your own but i'm bringing this up simply to say that this study on wisdom is not meant to deify or worship wisdom at all especially um we are especially not trying to separate wisdom from the one and only Yah. But we are simply trying to bring out this aspect of who he is. Bring out this principle of the Most High, which is wisdom. So we don't want to get too caught up in the pronouns to describe his being. Although we often call him father or use these male pronouns. And then learning about wisdom, we see that she's personified with um female pronoun so she her hers um this doesn't change who the most high is for he is a spirit being and as a spirit being he uses the flesh to show us a shadow of who he is but because he is beyond the flesh as a spirit being we don't want to um take this too far to confuse us of our foundation and that foundation is the one and only yah and this spirit of wisdom coincides with the work of Hamashiach. And so that is how we know we are moving in the right direction because all this is pointing right back to him. So now we're going to be reading from Proverbs chapter 9 and we'll be reading verse 10. Because this is the foundation for how we obtain wisdom. And it reads, and this is a King James Version. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding so the fear of yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom so what is the first step to obtaining wisdom is fear of yahuwah but let's look at this word fear so in the Strong's Concordance here, it is H3374. And I've got this open here, H33, oh, it should be 3374, okay. Here we are, so here we are, H3374, Yara. It is a feminine noun. And the definition, or it's translated to fear, exceedingly dreadful, fearfulness, awesome or terrifying thing, fear of Yah, respect, reverence, piety, revered. So this word fear is really to revere. Um, and as the Most High, the creator of heaven and earth whose glory exceeds that of the heavens um we should fear him <laughs> for even the mountains melt when he moves and the earth shakes when he moves and we have not seen the fullness of the display of his power but we know his potential and that is a fearful thing but not fearful as unapproachable because you are afraid but a fear and reverence knowing of his holiness and righteousness and might and so the root word for yara is yare okay so this is an adjective to so this is describing something fearing reverent again okay and then the primitive root for both of these words um, fear is yare and this is a verb, so this is the action. Um, to revere, once again, to stand in awe of. And if we can recall the Hebrew letter He, or in the ancient Hebrew Ha, is a pictograph of a man or woman, a person standing 
with their arms raised in awe as in to behold a great sight so reverence honor respect in the same way you revere and honor and respect your elders um to so yeah cause astonishment and awe beheld in awe inspire reverence or godly fear um so that is the definition to revere is to fear to honor and it is to reverence or stand in awe of the might the power the strength the righteousness the awesomeness the holiness of yah the creator of all that exists the first and the last the beginning and the end the ancient of days most holy i am we are called to revere him in order to take the first step to acquiring his wisdom so now we'll be reading from the book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, and we'll be starting in chapter 19 and reading verses 18 through 20. This is also a King James. The fear of Yahuwah is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. The knowledge of the commandments of Yahuwah is the doctrine of life, and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. The fear of Yahuwah is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of his omnipotency. So once again, Reiterating what we read in Proverbs, the fear of Yahuwah is the first step to be accepted of him. And once we are accepted of him, then can we obtain wisdom by his love. And once again, the fear of Yahuwah is all wisdom. And all wisdom is the performance of the law. So we're already seeing that there is... Um, a connection between a fear or a reverence for Yahuwah and that motivation um, to follow the law because we revere him, because we love him. We want to follow his laws and follow his ways. Next, we'll be reading again another verse from Ecclesiasticus, also known as the Book of Sirach. This is an apocryphal book. And we are reading from chapter 21, verse 11. He that keepeth the law of Yahuwah getteth the understanding thereof. And the perfection of the fear of Yahuwah is wisdom. Hallelujah. So once again, similar to what we read in the previous book of Ecclesiasticus, it is the keepers of the law. It is the keepers of the law that obtain wisdom. Because when you keep the law, you are perfecting your fear. You are perfecting your reverence and honor for the Most High. And that perfection of the fear of Yahuwah is wisdom. And remember, we did a word study on perfection. And if you can recall, perfection... The Hebrew word for perfection and the Greek had to do with completion. So the completion, the fullness, the wholeness of your fear and reverence for the Most High is wisdom. Let's continue on. We are reading another verse from the book of Sirach also known as Ecclesiasticus, but we are jumping to chapter 14 and reading verses 20 through 21. Blessed is the man that doth meditate good things in wisdom, and that reasoneth of the holy things by his understanding. He that considereth her ways in his heart shall also have understanding in her secrets. And then lastly, we will be jumping to chapter 15 in Ecclesiasticus, 
and we'll be simply reading verse 1. And we read that verse from chapter 14 just to give you a context as to what's being referred to in chapter 15 of Ecclesiasticus here. So the subject is wisdom. The subject is wisdom, as we read in the previous chapter. And then chapter 15 and verse 1 says, He that feareth Yahuwah will do good, and he that hath the knowledge of the law shall obtain her. So we know her, based on the subject of the previous chapter, which is continuing on in this chapter, is that her is referring to wisdom, the subject of these two chapters. And once again, we see this same theme, that the fear, the reverence, the honor for the Most High, and the following of the law, right, which goes along with knowing the law, but to know and to do the law shall obtain wisdom. So we see here the first step towards obtaining wisdom is fearing Yahuwah. And our fear and reverence and respect for the Most High and His love for us is to follow His law, to follow His commandments, to follow His statutes. Now, we're going to be reading from Psalms chapter 110, verse 10. Oops, excuse me. We'll be reading from Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. And it reads, this is a King James Version. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Hallelujah. So once again, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. These are all pointing right back to the first or second verse we read. Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. And we also see... That when you have this understanding of wisdom and of the fear of Yahuwah, that you do his commandments, you follow his law. We will now be looking at the wisdom of Solomon. We are in chapter 9 and we'll be reading verses 8 to 13. So we'll be starting at verse 8. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount and an altar in the city wherein thou dwellest, a resemblance of the holy tabernacle, which thou hast prepared from the beginning. And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy works, and was present when thou madest the world, and knew what was acceptable in thy sight, and right in thy commandments. O send her out of thy holy heavens, and from the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings, and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable, and then shall I judge thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. For what man is he that can know the counsel of Yah? Or who can think what the will of Yahuwah is? Mm, Hallelujah. So this is coming from the perspective of Solomon, the son of David. And Solomon was the one who constructed the temple, the first temple um, for the Most High. The... um, many of the articles for the construction of the temple were acquired by David before Solomon's time but the temple was not built until Solomon's reign and so this is a holy endeavor to be building a temple and a holy tab a holy tabernacle permanent tabernacle for the most high and it the temple was built to resemble the same pattern of the holy tabernacle which we have gone over before so this pattern of the holy tabernacle again is being used to build the temple and this is a pattern which has been prepared since the beginning this is the blueprint or archetype pattern for all creation and we see once again that wisdom was with the most high in the beginning 
and we know her habitation is with the Most High. So from this verse, we can see that wisdom resides with the Most High in heaven, on the throne of his glory. And that through the fear and obedience of the Most High and his commands, that Yah sends her forth from his throne to labor with us and to instruct us in the will and the counsel of the Most High. For in this last verse, we see that alone, oops, excuse me, we cannot know the will and the counsel of the Most High, but we need the Holy Spirit of wisdom to instruct us and guide us. Now, we will be reading from another verse from Wisdom of Solomon, but we're jumping backwards to chapter 8 and reading verses 18 through 21. And great pleasure it is to have her friendship, and in the works of her hands are infinite riches, and in the exercise of conference with her, prudence, and in talking with her, a good report. I went about seeking how to take her to me, for I was a woody child and had a good spirit. Yeah, rather, being good, I came into a body undefiled. Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except Yah gave me her, and that was a point of wisdom also, to know whose gift she was, I prayed unto Yahuwah, and besaw him, and with my whole heart I said, and if you'd like to continue reading the prayer that Solomon um, spoke unto the Most High, supplicating for his wisdom, you can continue reading on Solomon chapter 8 and into chapter 9. But we're not doing this today. We're pulling out these scriptures um, from wis wis Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 and then also from chapter 8 to know that wisdom is granted directly from the hand of the Most High. So we saw in chapter 9 that her habitation is with the Most High. Um, and that she must be sent out by the Most High. And we see that again in chapter 8. That Solomon could not otherwise obtain wisdom. So the wisest man, Solomon, right? He could not obtain wisdom except Yah give it to him. And this is the same for us seeking to know the wisdom and truth of the most high that it is a gift from him and it is a point of wisdom it is wisdom simply to know that this is a gift of the most high and that through prayer and supplication through the fear of the most high and the following of his commandments shall we obtain her if yah chooses us worthy to grant it so we know that wisdom is a gift that is granted directly from the hand of the Most High. And who is it that sits at the right hand of the Most High? Hamashiach. Hamashiach is said to sit upon the right hand of the throne of the Most High until his enemies are made his footstool. I believe we have that pulled up here. Yes. Yahuwah says to my Yahuwah, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Yahuwah will extend your mighty scepter from Zion. You will rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on your day of battle. So we know that it is Hamashiach exalted at the right hand of the Most High. And it is from the hand of the Most High that wisdom is granted. So once again, this is all going back to Colossians, just as we, or to Christ. This is all going back to Hamashiach, just as we read in Colossians chapter 2. For it is in Hamashiach that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. For in him is the embodiment of the fullness of the Godhead. Hallelujah. So once again, it all goes back to him, to our high priest, our king of kings, our lord of lords, Yeshua HaMashiach. A couple more verses here. 
we will be looking at Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon again, chapter 7, and we'll be reading verses 16 and then jumping to chap- um, verse 21. So looking at verse 16 here. For in his hand are both we and our words, all wisdom also, and knowledge of the workmanship. In the hand of the Most High, the right hand, is all wisdom. Right? The right hand being Hamashiach. In him, let's go up, in him is all wisdom. Jumping to verse 21. And all such things as are either secret or manifest, them I know. So the spirit of wisdom that is granted from the hand of Yah is poured out or gifted unto holy men and women who have prophesied of the word of Yah. So those who perfected their fear of the Most High and followed his commands were given the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of wisdom pours out through words of prophecy and the spirit of wisdom was poured out in its fullness upon Yeshua HaMashiach especially so not just prophets so like Isaiah here Isaiah a prophet of the Most High certainly had the spirit of wisdom to speak the prophecies that were appointed unto him to write and to speak by the Most High. But in Isaiah and in many other books of prophecy, they speak of and prophesy of the Messiah, our Yeshua HaMashiach. And we know that the fullness, not just part of the spirit of wisdom, but the fullness of the spirit of wisdom and the mystery of the Most High was upon him. And so we'll be reading from Isaiah lastly, chapter 11, verses 1 through 5, and then wrapping this up. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of Yahuwah shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of Yahuwah. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yahuwah. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor. And reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Hallelujah. So, we see here from these verses that the spirit of wisdom was upon Yeshua HaMashiach, who had a perfectly complete in faithful fear or reverence to the Most High, the spirit of wisdom, right? The spirit of Yahuwah, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahuwah, the fullness of the Godhead was upon Yeshua HaMashiach. For this, these five verses are prophecy of him. For he is the rod that comes out of the stem of Jesse, the line of King David. And this is the branch that shall grow out of the roots established by King David and Solomon and his lineage on and on down to Mary and Joseph and then Yeshua HaMashiach. So at the end of the day, this prophecy of Yeshua HaMashiach is pointing to this fullness of the spirit of wisdom being upon him and also the fear of Yahuwah was upon him. Just as we read in Colossians and also through these other verses that the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. And then also 
following his commandments. And so lastly, we'll wrap up with reading. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto Yah, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I pray that you were able to be edified from the scriptures that we read, but I continue to admonish you to study for yourself, to study to show yourself approved unto Yah. I hope this will lead you on your own paths of research and studying in the word and truth of the Most High. And I hope you are able to see um, the first steps to begin to acquire the wisdom of the Most High. And I hope you are also able to see that the only way to obtain wisdom is through Yeshua HaMashiach and establishing and formulating a relationship with him. We give all praise, glory, and honor to the King of Kings, our High Priest, Yeshua HaMashiach. Have a blessed day, and grace and peace be with you.